Uh, welcome all to tonight's regular meeting of the Board of Finance. Uh, today, Tuesday, July 13th, I'd like to call to order the meeting and please join me uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the of United, United States, States of, America. of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty justice, and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item, public comments. I don't see any. Let me check this real quick. I know members from the public. Uh, any correspondence? No. All right. Next agenda item, the approval of the regular meeting minutes from Tuesday, um, June 8th. Since these were distributed in advance, uh, I'd entertain a motion to accept as submitted. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second if no one's up for it. Um, I had sent a discussion. I had sent in advance to Dion a few comments that I had on the minutes. I don't know if folks have additional comments. I'm good. Dion, I, I'm just not, I am unsure as to the process uh, from here on out. Will those edits be incorporated and then the minutes reissued? Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just make the, um, I'll make the amendments in my minutes of this meeting uh, to reflect what, what needs to be changed there. Okay. Right. Bob, can you speak to changes? What was the issue? Yeah, um, there were just a couple spots where, uh, in fact, you were at the heart of it a couple times, Nick, where uh, you um, participated in a vote and your name just wasn't listed. So um, I had you, I just wanted to make sure that it, the record showed that you did vote for those, those items. And then there was just a couple nits regarding short-term debt, you know, writing it out. Uh, and a clarification in one of the paragraphs that for purposes of the open space, the funding would come from not just the general fund, right, but the general fund fund balance. So they, were, they really were in the, in the nature mostly of NITs. All right, I see a phone number, nine five. I'm hoping it's Eileen. <laughs> well, and, and yes, Dalen. it is. Maybe they're sharing a line. All right. Uh, Eileen is with us. She is the next agenda item. So you want to take us off of mute, Bob? Are we going to vote on that motion in the minutes? Oh, shoot. Yeah, yep. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> You're still on mute, Bob K. I was going to say the exact same thing Nick just said. Okay. So we've got a got a motion it's seconded um i guess with the amendment of the motion that the minutes be accepted as amended all those voting in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed okay all right nick and bob k thanks for picking me up on that all right next agenda item discussion and consideration of the park and recreation department um, you may recall that during budget season, given some of the concerns we had regarding COVID and therefore the uncertainty of whether or not Park and Rec would be able to run um, programs in the winter, we wanted to avoid what happened last year, right, which is where we set up in the budget a, an amount for programs that we just weren't able to run. Uh, and so what we did at budget time was we took $100,000 out of the Park and Rec programs account with the plan to uh, coordinate with Eileen to see what was going on. And that coordination begins tonight, right? So hopefully tonight Eileen will tell us just what's going on, uh, what she is seeing uh, with COVID, with her programs. Uh, we will then later on in the year, again, kind of based on talking to Eileen, have another discussion. And depending on where that discussion comes out, we would reach out to the Board of Selectmen and uh, recommend that they put the $100,000 back into the um, Park and Rec budget out of the excess proceeds that came from the fiscal year 21 budget. 
Bob, can I jump in here for a second? Yeah, it, go ahead. It, if I remember this, we were trying to cut the budget to make the budget increase, I'm sorry, the tax increase lower for the you chose to take the 100,000 out when you knew this was based on, and now, I mean, we're not even into this new season and we're gonna put it back in. So I feel it was a shell game. Instead of, instead of lowering the spending, we just did a shell game. So I just want, that's the memory I have of how this thing happened. Yeah, I, I think of it differently, Nick, right? What we wanted to do was avoid in fiscal year 22, what happened in fiscal year 21. And that is collect from the taxpayers money that was not eventually used in programs. That money from fiscal year 21 did fall through to the bottom line and now we'll be in the fund balance. So and what we what we did was right to avoid that happening again in fiscal year 21, we're not we're not playing with the budget. We're not gonna change the budget, but rather we'll get the cash to fund the programs from last year's budget. So I don't think of it as a show game, as a better matching actually of the proceeds. I would agree. I would agree with most of that. If it happened right in the beginning when we were going over the budgets, but this happened right at the end. It, and, and, and some people got about cut, cutting different boards. Like, oh, <clears throat> take it out of this. That's hey, just I, going on my, I'm only no, one person. And I'm sorry, Eileen, I don't know. Can, can you put your, your, your phone on mute for a second, Eileen? Because it's, it's cutting out Nick when he's, he's talking. Sorry about it. Thank you. Nick, would you mind just restating that? I couldn't. I don't think we were able to hear it. And I agree with everything that you had said, except that this didn't happen during the, the regular uh, budget negotiations where we're going over department by department. It happened at the end. I think it happened at the last night. When, when different things were being cut. And that's just going by my memory. I voted against it, but it just seemed like it, a, a shell game to me. You know what I mean? Like there was a plan between the four of you and I'm not calling anybody out here, but it was like, okay, we'll just fix this later. And we got our spend down, but then we're gonna put it back. And I was against it for that reason. We, we didn't lower spending because we're ready to put the money right back in. And we knew the revenue was gonna come from Eileen's programs. So that's all I just wanted. There's, I know there's no one listening except us, eight of us here. I understand that. I wish more of the public would get involved, but that's the town we live in. So I hear you, Nick. And look, not, not, not to extend this any very much longer. I'll tell you, if, if you're going to ascribe a plan to us, I'll take, I want to take full credit because I think it's the right thing to do. What we did was the right thing to do, right? We did not double up on over collecting revenues from the taxpayer. If Eileen comes to us and says, you know what, we still have COVID. These variants are preventing us from doing winter programs. We are exactly where we should be. So um, I, 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 I'm going to call that an unintentional compliment. So, so thank you. And thank you for listening. <laughs> Eileen, to you, uh, can you just give us kind of a heads up as to what you're seeing in programs what you're thinking about this winter, what are you gonna keep your eye on and, and you know, help us be better informed? I'm gonna interrupt for just a second and let you know that the other phone number that popped up is Daylene Foster and she joined the meeting at 7.07. Good deal, thanks Go Daylene. Eileen, it's to you. Oh. Okay, so, so let me, um, if you have seen the, and you probably haven't seen it from Bob yet, but our total income is about $336,000, which is about 175 more than what we had when we started our summer registration for camps and programs. And everything that we've run in the summer, everything that we've offered has won during the summer from camp to baseball camps, to um, uh, theater camps, to everything that we had offered is has um, capacity that we are following for COVID and then some, if we're able to add when it's outdoors, we can add more kids to it. So um, I feel very happy that we're able to offer things for the summer. And based on my 
what I'm hearing from people and what people, I think it's going to fall, keep growing as the fall comes and even more so as the winter comes. Um, you know, the guidance is still having to wear masks, but I still think that we're going to be offering programs indoors, whether they wear masks when they're watching and when they're participating, they're not wearing masks. So um, I feel confident that we are going to be able to run programs. We might just have to run them with smaller groups and more time slots in gyms and that type of thing, um, just based on our experience. And, and I'll just tell you, we have a theater program, camp program that has 51 kids in it and they're wearing masks and we have a, uh, shows this weekend and we've already have over about 400 people have bought tickets to go to the three shows that we have. So, and we do a fall show and then we do spring and, and two, two of them in the spring. So we feel that people are gonna want programs more. Um, and I think we're moving back in the right direction. And part of the reason why I'm here is just to keep you informed of what is going on. Because I think that if you don't find, if you find out in September that summer went and we had full programs, that might be too late to vote in October. If you find out now and we talk again in August, you can make a vote if you so choose to put the money back in so that we can run full spring programs and winter programs um, to keep us moving forward. So um, that's part of the reason why I am here tonight to, to talk to you about what we're doing. So, um, and the only other thing was um, Bob Kowalski and I talked about is what was left over in our program and what we took in adds up to about 532, 591, which is not the 640 that we estimated in income, but it's not bad considering nine months out of the year, we were not able to run anything. So, um, but that's my, um, my view of what we're having going on now in the recreation field. So if I could jump in, Eileen, uh, and congratulations. Um, I've heard that you're doing a marvelous job and you have great, great participation. And, and as a community uh, uh, leader, I thank you for that. Uh, you did say in your, in making this presentation that there are COVID guidelines that are being adhered to. And I'm, I'm sure that it's some distancing and some limitations. How is that affecting your participation, one, and also uh, the cost in terms of uh, people who needed to support the programs? Is it uh, off by 10%, 20%, just a ballpark? How, is it, how are you being impacted? Um, I, uh, it's probably about maybe less than 10%. Um, our day camps, we've kept our numbers between 50 and 60 kids, which was sometimes we can go up to 80. And the reason why is that we, when we're indoors, the kids have to wear a mask and we don't wanna have them have 20 kids in a classroom setting. Um, when we're outdoors, they don't have to be masked. We can social distance a lot better. So I would say it's a small amount, um, but then on the other side, our baseball camp, which is usually has 18 kids, we were able to take 33 kids. So anything that's outdoors is increasing in numbers and some of the things that we are limited in indoors have, like our theater program with the 51 kids, that's the numbers we would have last year and any other year that we've run. So, um, and we don't have limits on how many people can come to the show this time and like in the spring. So I think some things will balance each other out because one program is increasing and another one, like our day camps, we just are keeping it to the minimum. So, um, but it's hard to say what will happen in the fall when we're gonna be more indoors. Um, we might just have to use larger space to keep our numbers to what we would want. But, um, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, well, the, the second part was the cost. And if you were running a program for 50 to 60 people, is that about the same cost as running a, a, a program for 80 people? Is there any impact? Uh, it, 
it's probably pretty pretty close. We may have like one or two additional staff members um, if we needed to go up to the 80. So we've kept our count for counselors. Um, and some of it, it's like for baseball camp, the numbers went up. So we're looking to, we use volunteers for some of those things. And also the cost that we charge for that um, covers the, you know, the extra cost, like 33 kids at $175 will cover an extra staff person needed to have that many kids in, the, in our program. So we, we try to balance the staff ratio to the in income that we're taking in. Great, thank you. I know there's a lot of, a lot of balls in the air there that you have to keep juggling. So I appreciate <laughs> your efforts to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Eileen. You know, it, it's such great news to hear 400 people are going to see their kids, but us 10 vaccinated people can't meet in a room. We have to still do Zoom. That's really disheartening. I got this shot in the arm so I can get back to life. And we can't have a board of finance with eight of us in a room. So that, that's, that, that's the first statement. But Eileen, great. And I'm glad you're having 400 people watching the kids. And I, I really appreciate that. You, you said you had 170,000 more in, in, in net gross. Was that over last year or a normal year? No, that, that's what I was able to take in when we started summer registration this past spring. Okay, so, so how much that's the you seen a big increase okay. opposed to a normal year? Um it's probably about average. It was probably about the uh, maybe a little bit on the lower side just because our camp numbers are not 80, they're at 55 or 60. But okay. usually in the spring of the year we do take in a large amount of income till the end of June. So um when people start signing up for summer camps and summer um, programs, so. So the answer, the answer is you're just getting back to normal. We're not anything. Yes. We're, we're just getting yes. back to the fair statement. Yeah. Yes. Fair statement. Okay. Any any other questions for Eileen from Board of Finance members? Uh, well, I have I have a question. Um, can we get another update as we move along in this so that um, we keep our, our, our pulse on this activity? It, it sounds great right now, and hopefully it'll, re, it'll re continue along this. Uh, you know, the media is already reporting a variant um, for the fall, not knowing whether Connecticut with its high vaccination rate will be affected by it at all, but you know, hopefully not, and I'd like to say, if not, we'd like to be able to react appropriately to the uh, budget. Yeah, my, my plan, Robert, is to have a second call like this or uh, have a second presentation by Eileen in the September, October timeframe. Okay. Um, we do start our fall registration September 1st. So if you're meeting two weeks later, I would have a good idea of what is happening you know, it might be a little early, but I'll have a pretty good idea of what people are doing for the fall. Cool. Okay. I'll, I'll make a note, Eileen, to invite you back for the September meeting. Okay. All right. Anything else? I, I can just bring up, you know, Eileen needs some lead time if you're going to bring the $100,000 back into the budget. Um, in order for her to plan the programs going into the winter, she just can't you know, start them up all of a sudden in December or January uh, because it may be too late at that point, you know, so. Bob, can you give us a more later, a more specific time frame, and maybe lay that out for us? Like, what are the steps that Eileen goes through to incur the cost of running winter programs? I, mean, I, that would, I think that would, be would helpful. probably have the best handle on that. Um, but the two of us can sit down and work something up for you. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Okay. Do you meet in August? Because we could have it done for August. You know, I, I lean my, personally to, to to Robert's point. I think our concern, my, my concern, I won't talk for the board. Right? My concern is what's going to happen December and January, like when you start doing right. the winter yep. programs. And for us to make a call in, in September, to me, seems premature. Right? Okay. But, yep. you know, but to the extent you have you have a lead time, 
then we're, we're going to have to work within that lead time as well. Okay. All right. Any anything else for Eileen? Eileen, thank you very much. Always a pleasure to have you, you come and tell us all the good things. Yeah, definitely positive this summer. Oh, thank God. All right, good all deal. Right, thank thanks. you. Yep. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye now. Uh, all right, the next agenda item. Uh, it's the Freedom of Information Commission final decision. As some of you know, a member of our board um, filed a complaint with the Freedom of Information Commission back in November of 2019. That action was brought against me as the commissioner, this entire board as the Board of Finance of Bethel and the town of Bethel. Um, if it had been just me, I wouldn't have seen a need to talk about it tonight. But town council advised that again, because the complaint was lodged not only against me, but against this entire board and the town, that I should give the board an update as to the proceedings. So that's what this is. Um, as mentioned, the, the complaint was filed in November of 2019. On May 10th, the hearing officer filed her report and recommended the complaint be dismissed. The complaint was then viewed by the entire Freedom of Information Commission and on a unanimous basis, all the commissioners voted to dismiss the claim. So I just wanted to let the board know that the complaint, I think many of you knew this, the complaint was filed and has been dismissed by the Freedom of Information Commission. That is the extent of my update on the final decision. Any questions? Uh, yeah, I know a little bit about this, but if it was brought against the town and this commission, why wouldn't any of us even talk to? Them? You know what I mean? I mean, it doesn't sound like there was a thorough investigation if no one even contacted us, but that's just me. I'm so smart. Yeah. No, well, you can always talk to the person who brought the claim, Nick, and get an explanation for that. And I guess, was it Cynthia, I guess, right? Oh, you don't have to mention it. It's fine. If, if somebody wants a copy of the final report, I certainly can provide them with it. Thank you. All right. So I, I, I do have a question on uh, for Bob Kozlowski about this. Um, in the past, when we've had these FOI complaints, it's cost the town about $5,000. Is that ballpark um, still hold up for this kind of complaint? Well, this, this particular complaint, um, the total cost, and I, I spoke to Marty Town Council, uh, well, we uh, corresponded by email today, um, his last invoice to us at the town was for uh, the month of February. So he's working on March and he, he didn't have an idea at this point about April, May or June, because I asked him whether or not there was any costs incurred for this matter uh, during those months. And he said, uh, I'm still working on March and I don't know. So, but up until um, December 31st of, of 2020, uh, there was $3,051.75 expended for this matter. Overall, up until December, there was $8,260.15 spent on all FOI cases. So, right. Sounds like we need to go out for bid for a lawyer. Sounds like we need more reasonable actions, Nick. That's what it sounds like. This is an embarrassment to this board. This is somebody who could not read the statute on its plain language, right? And who had an ax to grind and cost this town money. To Bob Kay's point, there was a hearing in May and a full commission hearing in June. So there will be additional costs. If you want to lay blame at the feet of somebody, blame it to the right person, please. I'm not I said blame. I said we need to go out to bid on a lawyer. It's no, you got it. You have a town council who has the most efficient knowledge and structure in representing not only the town and the board. So again, if you got a complaint, I would bring it to the person who is at the root cause. Bob, we're pretty much on the right side of most things they hear. That's I'm, I'm making a comment about the price of it. That's all I'm doing. I'm not saying if we live in America and everybody has a free free right to do whatever they do. I don't think it was the right thing. I don't even understand what it was about, to be honest with you. 
because it's static and a radio to me. Okay. But <laughs> yeah, well, look, the best, the best charge would have been zero to not have to deal with it. Right? Exactly. To have an adult conversation and to learn about areas that are just, you know, convoluted. Sounds some, like of us have, some of us have some experience. In. All right. Any more on this topic? All right, moving on to the final agenda item, that's the comptroller's report. So turn it over to Bob and to Brad. All right, um, I gave um, uh, a copy of the report, which um, Dion had emailed to everyone. I do apologize. I, you know, when I was putting it together, I was scanning it. I said, it's kind of thin. And then I realized today when I'm looking at it, I didn't give you all the backup for all the department. So uh, I'll send that to everyone uh, tomorrow. But uh, just starting from um, the revenue, uh, we have a surplus of a million 060, 265. Um, not as much as in prior years, but still it's over a million dollars. Our collection rate, which is an incredible 99.68, um, came in as of uh, June 30th. The year before, we were at 99.17. And it, it just so happened that Joe Sanapani, our auditor, was in today. And we were talking about this and he said, yep, um, I've seen this in the other towns already. Uh, all the collection rates are higher than they have been in the past and probably higher than they ever were. And his feeling was that people were afraid of the, uh, uh, the virus, the pandemic, and they wanted to protect their homes. And they made sure ones that would sometimes hold off on paying, they made sure that they made their payments. And uh, it's it's obvious in Bethel that you know 99.68. It's almost 100 percent that um, you know the, uh, the people that um, um, are tax paid. Um, going into um, the expenditures, the expenditures look very good. Although at this point um, we always have invoices coming in. Today I saw two for legal fees, small ones. Uh, one was 2300 I think it was, and the other one was maybe 1500 Those small bills will continue to come in, and we normally do uh, a planning meeting with the auditor right around now, but we're going to probably do it the end of the month or early next month. And one of the questions is, when are you going to be ready? And typically, we're ready September 15th, around that date. And we'll have all the expenses, and the revenue is pretty much uh, locked up at that point. So, you know, if you look at um, you know, the expenditure report, you're looking at a surplus of 858,000. I think that's going to come down a little bit. There may be a couple of accounts that will be, um, will actually have an additional surplus, depending on the encumbrances that we took. But um, I think we're going to be in very good shape with uh, the expenses too. The Board of Ed, at this point, just for this report, um, Terry didn't give me a final number. Uh, we were in the meeting yesterday and and she was busy with negotiations, so um, she's going to get me that. But uh, I just zeroed those two accounts out. Um, the 445 is going to be the 445. They're not going to exceed that number. And the Board of Ed uh, may have a small amount. I don't think it's going to be as big as last year, you know, in that $300,000 range. Uh, but they'll probably have something that's going to be uh, a surplus. Um, but overall, like I said, 858 right now, a million on the other side. Um, we're, we're in really good shape, you know, so. Um, I think Matt, you had your hand up first, then Nick, it looked like you had a question. So maybe Matt, then Nick, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, Bob, I have a question that's probably an embarrassing one because I didn't study accounting in college. Why is the, uh, the revenue surplus shown as a negative? So I can, what's that? It's a credit balance. Okay. Yeah. Good and question. as opposed to uh, the expenditures, which uh, normally carry a debit balance, so that's a positive number. Okay. So uh, just so we can explain it when people ask, because we do post these things on the website. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. If you really, if you really want to confuse yourself, Matt, banks do it a different way. Yeah. So accounts <laughs> do it one way, banks do it a different way. It's none of it makes sense. Okay. Nick, you, you had a question for Bob or Brad. Uh, we, we talked this afternoon, but if the Board of Ed had a bunch of COVID money, whatever it was, two, three, four million dollars, 
they obviously spent that. Um, so if there was extra money from the COVID money, would that come back to the town or that's just board of ed money? That's, that's yep. board of ed money. And that, that money is with the COVID and their grants. Um, and, and it's for specific purposes and they have to, if, if, if they don't use it, my understanding and my understanding is it has to go back, not to us, but to the state or the federal government. You know, so they use it up. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So, um, but you know, their regular numbers, the forty-seven million nine sixty-nine. I mean, we'll find out pretty shortly because they 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 close a lot sooner than we do. Uh, in fact, Joe was up there working with them today. So, um, I I wanted to bring up a couple other things. Tomorrow we have our bond sale. $17 million. Um, we're hoping for some really good rates, although there was bad news in the afternoon or late morning uh, with uh, rates going up a little bit. I think they went up four basis points. But the really good news right now is that New Milford sold $9 million today for 20 years, a little bit less than us, but the same time frame. They're a double A plus, and they got a rate of 1.607. So I said to Joe, uh, not Joe, I said to Barry, uh, so that means, you know, we could probably get a little bit better rate than 1.607. And then he brought up the, the article about uh, uh, the rates going up a little bit. So I, I think we're going to be in line. I'm hoping less than what Fairfield did about a month ago. Um, they got on uh, $28 million, their AAA, um, they got 1.807. So, um, I mean, anywhere in between those two numbers is a slam dunk. And for 20 years, that's an incredible interest rate, you know. Uh, Bob, it's, it's I, funny that I Jenny believe... Montgomery Scott were the winners on both of those bids. New uh, Milford, Bob, I, be you know, so... I, believe, I believe New Milford's AAA now. I think they got uh, bumped no, up a year um, or two ago. They were going I'm for one it, of them. they didn't get it. That's what oh, Barry they didn't get it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they were hoping to get the AAA. And then um, I guess a week ago, they had the rating call two weeks ago. And uh, he was, um, Greg was a little disappointed that he didn't get it. So, I mean, I'll confirm that, but that's what I heard twice. So, anyway, that's, uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm hoping for a really good rate. And once I, uh, once we get it, then I'll uh, email everybody. And Bob, and Bob, you're obviously talking about the $20 million for the schools. Correct. And I know no one wants to bring this up, but, you know, we're paying the $20 million. The town of Bethel voted on the $60 million project. Um, I, I begged for a tour to get everybody's eyes on this project up there. And I know I'm in commercial and uh, commercial building. And there's finishes up there and, and things that we deserve so much better. And no one's talking about it. They're just, oh, you're being too fussy. You know, I, I walked through a, a, the, one of the schools and they said, aren't these windows beautiful? Yeah, they're beautiful. I went up and I shook the window because the thing's not even mounted to the wall. So mm -hmm. I wish the owner's rep and the architect would do the job that the town of Bethel is paying them for. Rizzo's doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. You know, if they can get away with something, they're gonna get away with it. But my opinion, the owner's rep and the, the, the architect that are supposed to be looking after this job is, is failing us. So yeah. that may be personal opinion, but there was stuff up I, I saw there and some of the stuff can't be fixed. It can't be reversed. Once the, you know, once the baby's born, the baby's there, there's things you can't reverse, but we deserve, we spent $60 million. We deserve $60 million. And I'm a little disappointed that I've been told, Oh, you're just being a little too picky. I think Bethel deserves it. And I just want the record to show that. I don't, I don't know the details on that, Nick, but I know Gerilyn, who's uh, with STV, the owner's rep, our owner's rep, they're, they're uh, negotiating or they're working on um, a few, uh, a bunch of items, you know, um, so I, she's pretty tough. And, um, you know, I don't know why it's gotten to this position. I haven't seen it, but, you know, you, you have, so you have a better understanding. And again, I don't normally ask a question unless I kind of have the answer. I'm not real smart, so I need to work twice as hard. I got punch lists, okay, and room numbers. And in that tour, I went to rooms and I looked at the issues, okay, because I know what punch lists are. 
And mm -hmm. again, if everybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, it's a list that they saw something wrong and they want it corrected. So then I ask, who has the authority to, to uh, close out the item that it's been repaired? And they say, oh, well, the owner's rep and the architect. And I go to the list because I asked for the list and they're closed out, but the items aren't fixed. Mm -hmm. That's, I think we deserve better. And I can get on top of a building and scream about it. No one's listening, but we're going to pay the 60 million. I feel that Bethel deserves better. And I understand that people don't want to stand up and be on these committees and do the work. Some people want the title, but they don't want to do the work. And I know it's hard work, but you have to, you have to do it. Matt and I had a conversation. People don't want to, you know, don't have the time because they don't want to be, be put up in the public and be called names. Just like when I walked through the building and I said, you know, I heard from a Republican that, oh, you're just being too picky. Well, her house looks pretty nice. Apparently she's picker than I am. So I, that's all I'm going to say. Gotcha. And tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Any, any questions for Bob or Brad on the comptroller's report? I like to make a motion that we accept Bob's report tonight. I'll second. All, right. All those in favor? Uh, well, uh, discussion? Yeah, that's contingent on getting the rest of it. Oh, yeah, I'll send it out tomorrow. I'm so, I apologize again. All but those the numbers aren't going to change, right, Bob? I mean, it's just back. No, up. no, 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 no. You know, there's not going to be any difference. So no. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, that brings us to the end of the agenda. We'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. And I think Nick seconded it. So all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, good deal. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye yeah. now. Have a good one.